Wi-Fi Sheep would like to say a huge thank you to all of you that kindly support us. Help us continue to bring new videos like this. Join patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep from just $1 a month. Hello everybody and welcome back to a still very much locked down Wi-Fi Sheep right here on YouTube. I hope you're doing well. We're doing okay here, but obviously with the continued COVID lockdown uh, dragging on for yet another month, I think there's an element of fatigue setting in. But still, we've got to do what we've got to do, as I've said all along. Now, in February 2021 and rolling into March, as it is now, a rather special computer system celebrated 40 years. It's one that is very close to my heart. It is, of course, the Acorn BBC Micro, which is our home and, if you like, go-to vintage 8-bit machine right here on Wi-Fi Sheep. So, of course, we couldn't let that go by. We had to celebrate it and hence make this video today. Now, since we first moved here in 2018, I've had this particular Micro set up permanently here in the workshop. And although it's perfectly fine, it's a great specimen, it's not exactly appropriate for the celebration of 40 years and I'll tell you why. This particular machine is a BBC Micro 128 and it's actually one of the last of the BBC range of 8-bit micros that was ever manufactured. This one was manufactured between 1986 and was actually last on sale brand new in 1994. The monitor is also not period correct. It's a generic Philips or Magnavox, as it would be known in the United States, monitor. And these were one of the last RGB CRT type monitors. And basically a lot of firms, including Acorn, would buy these from Philips Magnavox and they'd rebrand them for whatever their company was. So mine is a Acorn branded one from an Archimedes, which was a slightly later machine. But I've also seen these on various other YouTube videos and even in museums and exhibits branded with Commodore, Atari, Amiga, to name just a few. Also, the floppy drive on this, I've got a dual five and a quarter inch and a more modern 3.5 inch drive. And again, you wouldn't have had the 3.5 inch drives back in 1981 when the BBC Micro first appeared. So you could argue that my setup here represents the very end of the BBC Micro's service life being a machine that would have been typical from the late 1980s right through to the mid 1990s. So I think for the first time in nearly three years it might be time to actually swap this machine out and have something a little bit more period correct to celebrate 40 years of the BBC Micro. And here we are. This is an original BBC Micro and is more representative of the type of equipment setup you would have seen from 1981 when the machine was brand new. It consists of a BBC Model B. This particular model I know was manufactured in 82 and you've seen this one used before on the channel. And we also have one of the original or very early Micro VTEC Cub monitors and these quite frankly hideous 14-inch uh, CRT dis RGB displays. I remember our school had these um, pretty much throughout. We also have a period correct Opus or Opens 5 and a quarter inch floppy disk drive, both 80 and 40 track switchable. So let's see if this still works. This monitor has not been on since I moved here, so Ah, there we go, that's looking promising. So yeah, I guess I'm quite lucky to have uh, used the BBC microsystem back in the day and still be in my early 30s at the moment. That came about because most of the schools around here in Shropshire, England, didn't have an awful lot of money given to them by central government. So the original 1980s allocation of government issue BBC micros was all my school actually got. So when I actually started school in 92, and you can probably work out my age from that, uh, these were the first computers that we ever saw. And when I left school in around 2002, um, they were still there, both in my primary and then my secondary school. So they had a very, very long service life. And that's why I'm about 10 to 15 years younger than most uh, nostalgic retro YouTubers, but can actually claim I did use these in the day 
in the classrooms, kind of in frontline service. And that's kind of where I, I grew to love them, really. And hence, it's been fantastic to have the opportunity to collect and maintain my own now privately preserved BBC Micros and also to have the channel here on YouTube to be able to share this fantastic hardware with you all. OK, so let's try a program. This is on uh, original five and a quarter inch single density floppy disk. Uh, we'll just pop that in the drive. And then it's shift break. See, that's going to load. Oh, it is. There we go. Yeah. So this was a very primitive word processor called Stylus. It was actually developed in Belfast, Ireland. And our primary, and for some reason our secondary schools, uh, this was the word processor that we all had to use. Um, and it's pretty shockingly basic by uh, even standards of the time. It's literally one font, one size, and it could only hold a couple of pages of text, if that... Um, it did have quite a cool uh, speech synthesis feature, which was in software, not in ROM. So if you hit escape and let's see if you can hear this. <laughs> I don't even know if you heard that, but that was rubbish. <laughs> yeah, um, still. It's memories, it's not a good piece of software, but it's memories, we had this back in the day. So for me to be able to actually get an original system back together and to have a copy of the software, uh, this particular copy actually came downloaded from the internet as .ssd file, and it was a huge thanks to the chaps at Stardot Forums that led me to be able to get a, a ROM version of this, because a lot of entertainment products and games for the BBC Micro have been preserved, but a lot of the kind of education or um, office type software wasn't, and a lot of it's actually lost. So it was great to be able to get a working copy of Stylus again, um, even if it's purely for nostalgia values. A question that quite often comes up, especially with my uh, viewers and even patrons on the channel, is what is the BBC Micro actually like as a computer to use and as a piece of hardware? Especially for those of you outside the UK or Western Europe that won't be so familiar with these particular machines. Well, if you imagine a 6502 based micro, so something like an Apple II or a Commodore 64. Well, the BBC Micro, I would say, kind of sits almost between those two machines. So if you imagine it can be halfway between an Apple II and a Commodore 64, what you'd probably roughly get in capability, memory and software library would be a Acorn BBC Micro. Of course, what's also been fantastic in the modern age, here in now the 2020s, is the fantastic community that support the BBC Micro with new hardware, new software. A lot of this I've actually covered right here on the channel. And also, very recently, there was a new book that came out called Acorn World in Pixels. Now, I'm not sponsored to talk to you about this. I've literally just bought a copy and it's a big book. But this is an absolutely fantastic book. And I was really dubious when I bought it. I thought, oh, no, this is going to be a bit, you know, copy and paste off Wikipedia type thing. But no, it is fantastic. And it almost acts like a brilliant encyclopedia for all the kind of entertainment and game titles for the BBC Micro. So if you've got one of the uh, MMC or Turbo MMC devices, that is the little SD cards that have all the games preloaded, I must stress, not legally, but you can buy these off uh, eBay and places like that. And it gives you access to be able to play all the retro classic games preloaded without actually needing original floppy disks or any hardware like that. And this book is absolutely fantastic as it goes through all the top games in sometimes quite um, gory, brilliant colour, as you can see here. And that's the one thing about BBC Micro. It only had a uh, eight colour TTL RGB digital logic. So although it boasts itself as a 16 color machine, it can only actually produce eight colors on screen. That includes black and white. Hence, all the games generally have quite high contrast, gory colors. Um, but yeah, this book is fantastic for just going through and looking at the games, a lot of which are obviously before my time. So I've never played these and I wasn't even aware of them. So for me, it's been a real learning curve. As I said at school, all we ever use these for was stylus and word processing. We didn't even 
do programming. We weren't taught that because at, by this point in the 90s, computer science and programming was out the window and it was all about data entry, receptionist work, spreadsheets, databases, and eventually Microsoft Office. So these machines had to adapt from being scientific devices for learning programming to being effectively electric typewriters. Well, that brings us more or less to the end of our nostalgic tribute to 40 years of the Acorn BBC Micro. If you haven't done already, do subscribe to us here on Wi-Fi Sheep and do check out our BBC Micro 8-bit playlist, which has all the projects, restoration work, and also programming projects I've been doing for the BBC Micro, including Nanogangs, which is my own 8-bit platformer game written entirely in BBC Basic. As always, thank you so much for your company. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you real soon right here on the channel. Until next time, bye for now. Bye.